In this video, you'll learn to write condensed electron configurations. So we'll start off with an example, give you some practice, and by the end of the video, you'll be a pro at writing these condensed electron configurations. Let's start with bromine. So this is the full electron configuration for bromine. You'll note we have 35 protons, so we'll have 35 electrons since this is neutral. We can condense this by finding the noble gas before bromine. Here's bromine, so we go back and find argon. And then argon has 18 electrons. There we go. This is the noble gas core. We just write argon and then the rest of these electrons here. That'll look like this. And that's how you write condensed electron configurations. So let's get some practice and talk about some of the finer details with these condensed electron configurations. So this is the electron configuration for lithium. Lithium has an atomic number of three. That's the number of protons. Because it's neutral, it has three electrons. Two plus one, that gives us three. If you need help writing these electron configurations, there's a link in the description and at the end of the video. So lithium is right here on the periodic table. We can see that the first energy level, that one there, that has two in it, but it's full. After you get one, two, you have to go to the next energy level. And that would be the 2s1. These numbers need to add up to three. If we want to write the condensed electron configuration, we have lithium, so we go back to the noble gas before it, that's helium. And helium is the 1s2, we just put this in brackets. And that would give us a condensed electron configuration that looks like this. Didn't really save us much trouble, but lithium, that's the simplest condensed electron configuration there is. So pause and try this one. Here's the full electron configuration for carbon. It has six protons, so six electrons here. You write the condensed electron configuration for carbon. So we find carbon on the periodic table. We go back to the noble gas before it. That's helium again. So we'd put our brackets around this and write this as our condensed electron configuration. Let's try something a little bit longer. Pause and write the condensed electron configuration for calcium. And note calcium right here. This is calcium. So you're going to go back to the noble gas before. So we're at 20, atomic number 20. We go back to 18, argon. So we'd find 18 electrons here. That would be like this. So everything in here is the electron configuration for argon. We call this our noble gas core. Here's our valence electrons. So the condensed notation, that'll look like AR in brackets, 4S2. Again, these are our valence electrons. Now we're getting somewhere. This is starting to save us some time. What happens if we have an ion, though? Something like Ca2+. So when we have an ion like Ca2+, this plus, this 2 plus, means we've lost two electrons. So we're just going to take away two electrons from our configuration up here. So our electron configuration for Ca2+, plus, that's just the same as argon. It's still calcium. We still have 20 protons, but we've lost those two electrons to form the calcium ion, and the actual configuration of electrons, same as calcium, very stable. But rather than just crossing this out, Let's make it 4s0. That makes it a little clear that we've lost valence electrons. If you had a negative ion, something like N3 minus, you would just add three electrons to your configuration. Let's try a really long one. So for iodine, we have 53 protons, and because it's neutral, 53 electrons. If you count all these up, 53 electrons. So pause and try to write the condensed electron configuration for iodine. So here's iodine right here. If we go back, we get krypton. So we're going to have Kr. Kr has 36 electrons, so we find 36 electrons here. That's right here. So we'll just write Kr in place of all this, and we end up with our abbreviated electron configuration for iodine. There's something interesting happening here, though. Now we have these d orbitals, 4d10. So we consider all of these to be valence electrons, Except the d orbital, it's full with 10, so this doesn't usually take place in chemical reactions. When we look at our noble gases, in general, they don't react except under extreme conditions. Things like krypton and xenon, they can react because of these d orbitals. 
So under high temperature and pressure, sometimes you can get things like KRF2 or XeO4. So they will form some compounds, these guys down here, because of the d orbitals. All right, one last one. Write the condensed electron configuration for barium. And barium, that's right here on the periodic table. So we find the noble gas before barium is 56, 55, here we go, 54, xenon. So we count up to 54, that's from here to all the way over here. So if we're to write the electron configuration in its condensed or abbreviated form for barium, that'll look like this. So we have two valence electrons in this 6s2. So we go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's the 6 energy level. There's barium in group 2. So that makes sense. It should have two valence electrons, just like all these elements in group 2. So writing these condensed electron configurations, also called abbreviated configurations, it really helps us see these valence electrons clearly from all of this. And it also saves us a lot of time in not writing out this big configuration each time when we could just write Xe6s2 for barium. This is Dr. B with how to write condensed electron configurations. Thanks for watching.